Hi, Gem Fam. How's it going? We are now in your mirror season of Sagittarius. Sagittarius season always illuminates things about the Gemini side of the of the equation in a really crisp and incisive way. Um, the more I feel through December, the more I think through this energy for everyone, the more I'm realizing that everybody's going to want to be scrambling and analyzing and, and clenching on to some kind of coherent knowledge that they can then take to make their life theirs and to feel that they're in charge and they're in control. You know, there's like a real strong control element going on with that feeling in December. Partially that's just because we get into this headspace. We have the Julian calendar, which is like, turn over the calendar, it's 2019, and we have the solstice, which is very symbolic and beautiful. We have like this shift in energy. Sagittarius is also really hungry energy for knowledge. Not only that, we're still recovering from Venus retrograde. The post-shadow phase goes until the 19th. Um, we have Venus moving forward in Scorpio on the 2nd of December, but what's more interesting as well is that <laughs> Mercury is going retrograde into Scorpio, your ruling planet, on December 1st. So right at the beginning of the month, that first week of the month, a lot of energy is going into Scorpio, which is this investigative, intense energy. One in retro, one in post-shadow after a retro. Um, they're moving that way. And, you know, for you having all that Scorpio energy, like that's sixth house self-value energy. It's about how we serve in the world, how we take care of ourselves, our bodies, our routines. And um, the other thing I'm getting with, with Gemini, it's like, we have a new moon in Sagittarius, your opposite sign. And it's always a reflective time. Like when we have a new moon in our opposite energy, we're sitting there kind of thinking about how we want to relate, how we want to connect, how we want to move through the world. It's really a time to think about your relationships and what you want out of those relationships. And once again, coming out of Venus retrograde, finishing up Mercury retrograde, having Jupiter in your sign of relationships for the next year. There's a really strong ask there about how you valued yourself and your energy, where you've put that energy, and how that has reflected back at you in your relationships. Um, so there's that level going on. Let me start shuffling here. Um, the other thing that's going on is that I feel like you guys are feeling a bit like beginners all over again, which you're always inquisitive and curious. So that's like not necessarily a problem. Six of Cups, this card. This card. <laughs> okay, what was I saying about assessment with relationship and value? Six of Cups is one of those useful energies where you can, you may be finding you are going back through the backlog of past relationships. And this can be both romantic, obviously romantic, but also familial and with people you've worked with closely, anybody you've related to closely in your life. And looking at, you know, we like to put sometimes either a really harsh condemning light on relationships that didn't go well or idealize and say that person was amazing. They were just right for me. They were my favorite person. And to kind of put them in either category. But in reality, you know, it's always kind of this mixture of things. And, and the simplest truth is that that relationship was no longer serving you because you had learned what had come out of it. Um, and I think that's always like where we need to get back to, especially this December. You guys are going to want to analyze. Come up with pie charts and graphs and, and put it all together. Justice. Answers. What I like about this, you guys, is that, you know, Mercury goes into Sag on the 12th, and then there's this forward motion of, like, uh, communicative dialogue, and there's this energy of movement again. Like, as we get to the middle of the month, movement starts to happen. It starts to feel like things are crackling and moving in a way that works. We're going to talk about these cards a little bit more, but I want to kind of finish up this thought while I'm shuffling. Um, you're going to want to have it all figured out. You're going to be like, yeah, I'm a beginner. Yeah, I'm curious, but I kind of also would like to just have this figured out. I feel like I've been a beginner too many times. Like why, why am I beginning again? Five of wands, a little resistance, huh? Why am I beginning again? Because we're always all beginning again. 
And it's so simple. When you just know that that's the case, nothing feels as heavy anymore. And the people who really embrace that concept of beginning tend to have very abundant lives. Six of Swords. Wow. Okay, you guys have some embattled energy here that you need to let go of. That's, that, that's the thing. It's like, I think you guys think like you need to tally it up. You need to tally up what you've done, how it's been done, how quickly it's been done, how efficiently it's been done. Has it been done efficiently? Has it been done the best it could have been done? Maybe you didn't cover all the X, Y, and Z boxes. King of Wands. Oop, there's that Sag energy. Maybe you didn't check all the boxes. Devil. Cap season is coming. And with cap season, by the way, we are moving into your eighth house. And as we open that eighth house, there's a zero degree cancer full moon. Second house of money, value, possessions. There's a really, there's some heavy hitting themes in December, which is, it's like a kind of a quiet month. It's kind of reflective. It's kind of introspective. Like I said, recovering from these retrogrades. But, oh, uh, nine of pentacles, seven of cups. All right, you guys have so much going on. Um, it's like every state of mind, which I should I be surprised by you guys because you can like, you can go through the whole wheel of emotions and like feel through like the whole wheel of possibility and come out the other side and be like, what? Can you do that? <laughs> it's like, no, because I don't live life as a mutable air sign. So like I'm, I'm in awe. Uh, <laughs> I can like, I can do a version of it, but not at the level that you guys do. But there is simplicity, right? Like underneath all that analysis, all, underneath all that ability to like do mental gymnastics and look, did you do everything? Did you try everything? Did you investigate every corner? Did you investigate every path? Did you investigate everything with this relationship? Did you really cover the ground? Did you really try your best? Did you really make the right choice with career or location? It's like there is something with you guys wanting to just like go there. go there, go there, go there. Here's the thing. Take a breath. Take a breath. Because what you need to know is very simple. And you don't need to know it all now. Justice comes through, right? So we go through the the wormhole. We go through the levels of time and possible, possible identities, possible loves, past loves that have happened and that have hurt or that have taught you something or that have disappeared. And we come out to justice. And justice is like nothing's that complicated. You know, this is air energy, but it's applied in that sense of decision making. It's applied in that sense of bang the gavel, call it a day, right? It's like, it's we're not going to sit here weighing it out forever. We need to come up with a decision. We need to decide. The thing that I get with you guys is you have to decide that everything that's happened before now happened the way it needed to happen and leave it at that. You need to give yourself that peace. I think the only way to be a truly good beginner is to be in that headspace. I mean, it's not about like saying, you know, pig-headedly saying you were right all the time and that you treated everybody exactly as they deserve to be treated. It's not like that. It's like you understand that even when you misstepped, even when you said something hurtful, even when you when you didn't do things the way that you thought maybe you should do them, that you learned something from that and that you make peace with the fact that that's how it went down. And then you move on because it's holding you, right? It holds you in this conflicted space where you feel like you can't move into the next thing. It's it's resistance. One of the things that I'm noticing with the way that the energies are working in December is that it's like with the Mercury retrograde, with the post shadow of Venus, with Jupiter and Sagittarius, with Saturn at home in Capricorn, um, we are having like, it's like people's resistances and the way they frame them and the way they put them on themselves are just getting like their spot is getting blown like this is no longer on the down low it's like in your face so the a few ways that can come up it you know some of us will experience that just internally right and then possibly for gems you guys could notice that you are having past loves come up 
and contact you, or you could be in places of feeling conflict in your life because it's it's showing you something that you want to let go of. It's showing you something that you're holding on to. It's showing you where you have resistance to growth. And it's showing you where you're you're like continuing to feel that you need to relive a lesson, relearn a course when actually what's going on is it's like, no, actually, you're good. Don't learn that course again. Like you don't need to take it again. In fact, you're supposed to leave that behind. You know, the six of cups and the six of swords are balancing. Six of Cups is about kind of staying emotively in the past and feeling tied to it, feeling like you can go around in that watery circular motion all the time. And the Six of Swords is like, no, you don't. Just decide and move forward. Decide. Um, decide. Just decide you're going to do it. And that's your that's your invitation this month. That's what Sag season is doing for you. That's what that mirroring energy is doing with you and for you. It's like, it's not all about this mess. It's not messy. It's very clear. It's very clear what you need to decide to do. You already have the information and you just need to do it. And if you don't, if you don't just like roll with that, it will feel conflicted. It will feel a little messy and foggy and mushy. So take a breath. During the Mercury retrograde at the beginning of the month, we're closing it out the first week of the month, and then it goes direct, and then we start moving forward. Take a breath, listen into that, pare it down, make a list of the five things. What do you really want? Decide you are going to make peace with the past, you're going to accept it for what it is, and move forward. Accept what has no longer served you as well. Now, in doing that, we open up a whole new dialogue the second half of the month because look at these four cards. My goodness. King of Wands, Capric or Devil, not Capricorn, but the Devil is the Capricorn card, and the Nine of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups. Okay, here's your opposite sign showing up. You know, fire energy shows up around gems. Um, <laughs> you guys, are, you're cracking me up because the more I think about it, the more I just realize, like, I am genuinely surrounded by so many Geminis. <laughs> um, I'm a fire, so I'm like major fire. Uh, and I, I just think about that. Like we guy, we get drawn to each other. Gemini Leo gets drawn together. Gemini Sag gets drawn together. Gemini Aries get drawn together. Um, fire is good for gems in general. Um, I mean, I know some of you have probably been burned by the fire. I'm sure your your all of your oxygen has been consumed by some fires in your life. However, and yes, the King of Wands energy can be really stubborn, can be really pig headed, can be very much like I know how I'm doing this. But the thing with the King of Wands is that this is visionary energy. It's about looking at the big picture and moving forward. If you have this energy around you, there, I almost get the sense you need to trust it, trust it a little bit. Trust, trust the, 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 this action oriented focused energy. Cause once again, the thing with the King of Wands is he's decided, he's decided I'm going to move forward. Fire burns forward. You know, fire is very good at continuing a forward burn. And I think there's something about you guys needing to just really commit into that and feel it just for a little while in prepping for this year. Now, I know that that will bring up some shadow side with commitment. And it will bring up some shadow side with self-value and self-worth. Because once again, we have this full moon in Cancer at zero degrees of Cancer in your neighboring sign, like really barely out of your sign. Like this full moon could almost have been a Gem another Gemini full moon. You know, it's like that close, but it's in your neighboring sign. It's in this sign of value. It's in this sign of like pretty heavy hitting for gems. So when you have a full moon like that illuminating, one of the things it's illuminating is how your storytelling of yourself, there's still little pockets that denigrate you in your own mind and that feel like prisons and feel like lack and feel like you're not allowed to fully just go forward. And if you do happen to have a really intense personality with a lot of fire aspect in them, like just that way of moving through the world, you may find it's triggering up some of that feeling of, being entrapped or feeling feeling less than or feeling like your options are dying down. You know, there's a lot that comes up with Cap the devil energy because on the one hand, it's about really making some progress, really like digging into stuff, really opening doors and like 
showing up and intensity and passion. On the other hand, it has that shadow side of feeling tied into some old patterning, to feel tied into something that's not serving you. And I think I have so much here about relationship and what it means to have balance, what it means to have peace, what it means to connect and what that, what is good for you in that. And I think, you know, we as a society have like this pressure on like this idea of you meet the one and you, and, and that's it. And it's great. How much, but there's so much value in all the experiences you've had, <laughs> like so much more value than just sticking to like, you know, and it's like, don't fight the fact that you are mutable air and that you do have this ability to go through a lot of different experiences. But the more you're like kind of fighting against that, I feel like the more it, you feel embattled by this idea that you're beginning again, the more you feel like you're not allowed to do that. But here's the thing. You're headed to some really new, beautiful stuff, right? Nine of Pentacles is like, don't worry, you have this. Like, you have what you need. Resource-wise, you have what you need. You aren't, in fact, locked in a cellar. You aren't, in fact, going to be locked into old relationship patterns and old work patterns and old lifestyle patterns. In fact, you are doing just fine. You get into the haunted house of your mind sometimes, and it can come up with very interesting plots. It can come up with very interesting conclusions that are quite intellectual, even brilliant. But is it serving you? That's the question. Nine of Pentacles here just says one thing. You have what you need when you need it, and you don't have to think too hard about it. Underneath that, we have the Seven of Cups. There are some roads opening up for you if you're willing to, to, to dive into this beginning again, opening this up. And one of the homework assignments as you kind of, if you're willing to really embrace your value and engage with new patterning and engage with the new conversations and engage with personalities that work well with you like justice and king of wands energy works well with gems um and if you're willing to go into the capricorn season and transform some of this old patterning and transform the way you mostly just transform the way you're writing up the past like if you're writing your memoir are you going to write a memoir about how you just like failed at relationships or failed at work or failed at doing the career that you wanted to do and that you know all these 20 years of me doing this it just didn't would you write that memoir and publish it like really no you wouldn't you know if you're going to write your memoir you would talk about what that brought you and in doing that transformative work you're opening up some doors now seven of cups i always think of as this this is really expansive energy. You know, this is one of the more spiritual esoteric energies you can get because it's water energy and it's a seven. And that means you're kind of digging around in like the platonic ideal world, right? Like if you're thinking of Abraham Hicks going into the vortex, um, if you're thinking about Plato, you're thinking about going into the world of ideal, ideal forms that you want to manifest in the physical and parsing through what you really want and what you don't want. One of the questions that comes up with all this embattled energy that we were talking about at the beginning, and maybe you feeling some contrast and you getting into some contact with some energies that bring up some of this, is thinking about reframing what you really want and what you don't. Because I think sometimes we come up with a mythology about what we say we really want. We really want this, yes, this is what I want. And then we realize maybe that has morphed. Maybe what we thought was a rule, maybe what we thought of as a standard for what we really wanted isn't so important anymore, or it's shifted, or it's morphed. Once again, you guys are mutable air, so I don't really worry. I feel like you understand that. But even if you have that energy with you, you can second guess your own natural way, because it's like, maybe it's the wrong way. But like, follow that mutable air in the sense that you can be curious about this next beginning. Follow the fact that yes, you are mutable air. You are curious. You do have new beginnings. You do have closeouts. You do need to be curious about what comes in for you. Um, and that's okay. Don't get in, don't embattle yourself against your own nature. Accept it and then use it as the gift that it is, right? Instead of letting it imprison you, the concept of you as an explorer and an investigator and somebody who tries different things out and has different lifetimes. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I did year ahead forecasts for 2019 and I put those up on Vimeo. 
I really hope you go and check them out. I had so much fun. I really recommend it for Sun and Rising. Um, the, the discussion is really a way to empower you with the placement. So we're looking at major aspects, major transits, and how that energetically kind of forms the next year. Um, and I also pulled some cards to feel through it intuitively for you guys. So it's a really fun way to just kind of get engaged, get fired up, get excited, get imaginative about what this year could be for you. And I think you'll really have fun with them. I've had so much fun talking to you guys today. Like, wow. I don't know if I've seen this many, just every state of being, but um, that's fun. It'll be an interesting internal journey, I feel like, and possibly external journey as well. I love you guys so much. Have a beautiful December. Have a beautiful mirror season in Sag. Have a beautiful transformative season in Capricorn. I'll see you in January for more of that energy and a brand new year.